Hello, you are listening to the podcast Draw Me the World of Tomorrow. On the occasion of the second International Day of the Little Prince, we give a voice to those who create our future. Explorers, comedians, activists, entrepreneurs, all share the same ambition, to inspire the win of renewal and work together for the world of tomorrow. So my name is uh, Adam Asane, and I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of the Moleskine Foundation. What would be my definition of sustainable ecology? What comes to mind uh, is the intellectual component of uh, of the question. And when I say intellectual, I'm not thinking about the uh, elitist version of the, uh, you know, of, of what intellectual means, but I'm thinking more about um, the role that the mind of people uh, has in, in creating a sustainable ecology. What is the role and, and, and how much is important for us to really understand about the balance and the creativity and the uh, overall intellectual curiosity that people need to have in order to maintain an idea of, uh, and create and maintain an idea of, uh, of sustainable ecology. So I have a feeling that it often when we think about ecology, we kind of take ourselves out of the equation, or we put in ourselves inside only in terms of behavior. I should consume less, or I should do this, or I should do that. But I think that we should really think in terms of uh, what type of ideas am I generating? What type of attitude do I have? What type of um, point of responsibility I take within the system that I am part of? So when I think about uh, sustainable uh, ecology, I first of all try to think about what is, what are we doing to make sure that it is an ecology of thinking. There is an ecology, an ethical ecology of, uh, yeah, of of thinking and of uh, um, of creating a different sense of the world. When did I realize that I have? the power to create a positive impact in the world. Uh, it's funny because now I'm 15 years uh, in this, this line of work uh, in various roles. And, um, and I'm not sure yet what I actually have <laughs> the capacity or the possibility to, to really have an impact, a positive impact in the world. Um, it's funny. Uh, the, when I was, I think, 19 or 20, and I just graduated, or a little bit later, maybe 21, 22, like when I, when I graduated, um, in that moment, I was living in Milan, you know, I'm, I'm Italian, and, uh, you know, but I'm, you know, my father, part of my family is from, is from Senegal, and uh, moved by uh, this idea of changing the world and be a positive element in society, I decided to leave and go and save Africa. <laughs> so, and I went and I was, uh, you know, I was working international development. I was a volunteer in the beginning. Then I managed to manage even very large programs. And the more I was doing that job, moved by that intentionality of being a, a positive change in the world, the more I was probably getting far from the original intention because everything was becoming, you know, an external endeavor. Uh, instead of start thinking a personal journey, I was interpreting a role. And so my soul wasn't there. And, and it was later on in my, in my life um, that I started looking at um, introspection as the only way in which 
I think I can really be a potential positive element uh, in the world. So what I mean by introspection is that I was, I started by, uh, you know, the idea of saving someone else. While the truth is that the only person who needed to be saved was myself. And the funny enough is that the only person that I actually have the power to save is myself. But through this journey, through this, this idea of, in, through this introspective journey, then you discover so much. And by discovering so much, then you can, I think you can actually start uh, by you know, bringing positive change in society. From, from that standpoint, uh, there is a word that, that, that I really like uh, and, uh, and a concept more than, even more than a word that is Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is a term that probably many of, many of you are now familiar with it because it became very popular in the, in the 90s uh, thanks to Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela in the fight against apartheid. Because Ubuntu is a concept that really speaks about humanity. It really speaks about what makes uh, a human animal a human being <laughs> and, uh, and, and what makes us human. And, and Ubuntu, it basically speaks about the idea that there is no difference between myself and the other. I am the other. I am because the other. So in this way, that idea that I was sharing before, this idea of saving yourself is not in a selfish idea of, of things. It's not an idea of like, oh, I need to take care of my business. <laughs> you know, it's, it's completely different the moment that you embrace and accept the concept of Ubuntu. Because I, as a human being, I am part of an ecosystem. I am part of a community. And I am intrinsically connected to other human beings. So there is no way that I can have peace if other humans would have the same. So again, you know, playing with this, with this, uh, uh, with these two ideas, the ideas of saving yourself, but because you are part of something bigger than just yourself. Thanks to art and culture and knowledge and literature, I really had the chance to start developing certain tools um, and certain languages that allow me, that inform this, this journey. And, uh, and the more I, I go on, the, the more I realize that this is a very humbling journey. And, and I think that's kind of a key element to um, not to try to impose the idea that you have on somebody else in the name of saving or changing the world. The moment that you start with yourself, it's an intimate thing that has the, the, the power to really change things in a big way. And if I have to say in which way my role in the Moleskine Foundation and the Moleskine Foundation itself is contributing to this change, well, I would say that I'm first and foremost very grateful for for the Moleskine Foundation and what we built, because uh, it was through this, 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 this work that I learned uh, some of the things that I just shared with, with all of you. And I really learned through the Moleskine Foundation and through the other co-founders, the power that creativity can have uh, in informing this journey. So basically uh, now we are, trying to is create an we well we are we are creating an institution that want to inform this journey in for for many other people and they want to inspire their journey for many other people and in the end it is a creative journey and so as a Moleskin foundation um what we do uh, well i mean before we what we do i would say as the Moleskin foundation we we are not trying to teach anything to anybody. And we're not trying to impose any vision of the world to anybody. What we're trying to do is to provide those tools and experiences that can unlock the creative skills, 
especially in young people, and especially in young people that come from underserved communities and might not have access to certain opportunities. And at the same time, we try to support all those spaces that are out there that where criticality and imagination can occur, can happen, and it's keep happening. And I think as a Moleskine Foundation, our main role is to um, really be a catalyzer and be, um, a, you know, a, a positive uh, element to, to really just provide those experiences and those spaces where young people can really unlock their creative potentials. When you finish your own toilet in the morning, then it is time to attend the toilet of your planet, just so with the greatest care. I think this is a very, very interesting um, quote from the little prince because, it, and, it, and it kind of moved a series of, uh, of thoughts in me. Um, the two things that comes to mind uh, is, is a little bit of what I was sharing earlier, that is, Everything starts from you. Everything starts from self-care. You, you need to make sure that uh, you are in tune with yourself and with the world. And that is to me that the first part, you know, it, it, you know it's or the first part of the sentence. You know, and once you do that with, with care and once you do that with dedication, once you do that um, in the right way, that is the time for you to get out and put the same care for the rest of the planet. So, so that makes a lot of, you know, it, it, when, I, when I read that the first time, it, it, it made total sense uh, for me in, 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 under that light. But it also speaks to me for something that it was less obvious, at least in my head, but I don't know why it popped up. And, and it is a, a concept that is often, uh, you know, not considered for people that work in the creative space and the creative world or the deal, that is discipline. And, and the idea of discipline that is so much often, you know, considered and relegated in a very top-down approaches or, or very hierarchical mechanism and discipline is something that is imposed on us that we don't want to do and is always related to something, to a lack of freedom. You know, I think that that sentence inspired me the other way, the concept in the other way around, in a sense that you need to have the discipline of self-care. And through the discipline of self-care, you can take care of others. Through discipline in this, on, under this light, it's really about freedom. Through discipline, you can liberate yourself and you can clean yourself. And then through that, you can really become potentially an agent of change. And so this two, this two concept somehow uh, came up when, uh, when I read the, uh, the quote the first time. If I seen recently a, a project that, um, that can give us hope for the future and uh, considering the job that I do, uh, it, you know, the answer must be yes, because <laughs> otherwise it would be problematic. Um, and, and I have to say, I, I, I'm really privileged from that standpoint. Because uh, sometimes it happens that in the, in the line of work that I do, um, you live this duality. And it's a very specific balance. On one side, you really are exposed to some of the biggest strategies, uh, tragedies of the world and the biggest inconsistency and the biggest, uh, you know, and you really realize how unfair and unjust the world is. That it's hard to stay, to stay positive in front of certain uh, events. At the same time, you are exposed to so many, um, so many people and so many action that give you hope. But not only give you hope, that, that show you the way in which things can happen in a very concrete way. And, um, 
And for that, there are several, um, several examples that I could give. Um, the one that comes to mind, uh, because I, I reread it uh, recently and I rethought about it recently, uh, it was uh, a, an alumni of one of our programs uh, that is called At Work, uh, that is a workshop that aims to unlock the creative uh, skills in, uh, in, in young people. And um, this, this young woman, an artist, an artist at the time, um, was, you know, became a, a, a LGBTQI activist uh, while she was running a process of introspection and she was unlocking her creative skills. And she made the most beautiful artistic notebook out of it, powerful, strong, but out of that, um, the message was so clear and, and distinctive that inspires so many other young people. Uh, and I would like to, to read uh, you know, two lines about that, about what she said. Leila Babiri, that's the name of the young woman and activist who was part of the workshop. And um, when she described her, her notebook, uh, she described it in this way. And she said, life becomes good when you find love. Rethinking of what is right make you an activist. The world is full of diversity that we opt to embrace. I'm gay and there are so many questions. Why proud? Why is there so much torture, bullying in schools? I use burning to do away with the pain that many LGBTI people are having. I'm dedicating this notebook of love to this community, sharing my story as a diary for others to gain hope and strength, to make them see how they can get over things, be who they are by talking of stories that will help them. Now, you have to imagine that when uh, this young woman, an artist, really created this, this artwork. It was really through um, uh, a process of, um, of, of personal awakening to a certain extent. And the art is, is extremely powerful. She burned part of the notebook, so it's a very strong one. And you need to understand the context. That was around 2015 in Kampala, Uganda. And we were there having that discussion uh, in the, when in Uganda they were discussing death penalty for uh, homosexual people in the country. And she was one of the uh, activists that were working in that context. And something that for me was important is that that didn't come out out of a political idea. That didn't come out out of us, in this case, going to, to that country with a specific political agenda. That came out through dialogue. That came out through creating this, a safe space where people, young people, could express themselves and really take out their light. And I think in this case, the light of, of Leila really illuminated um, the way for so many other young people uh, of her generation. What should I say to the people of, of my generation? Um, well, is I guess I want to share something that I often try to remind myself, uh, that is simply to, to be creative. Uh, to start a, a process of creativity um, in a certain way to become a pioneer in your creativity, to re rediscover it. Uh, because creativity uh, means igniting an, an internal exploration journey that results in a concrete process of transformation, both internally and externally, that connects both the personal and the collective. I think that if we if we didn't know it before, much of the recent global history has revealed to all of us how much we don't know about the world, about ourselves. And, and funny enough, 
instead of starting a process of questioning and a process of, uh, um, of kind of understanding a, a self-awareness, uh, um, we tend to get on the opposite side of things and we tend to close ourselves and to just stick to what we know or what we think we know. Um, we also tend to defend sometimes outdated or untested assumption for fear of getting out of our comfort zone or, or in a sense, in a certain way, losing the understanding of who we are. Uh, and yet, the main quest in this case is to double down in this exploratory process. And to really start this exploratory process, we require curiosity and openness, and especially openness to fail, you know, that we, we tend to avoid so much. And to also be, be wrong, you know, and to embrace that you need to expose yourself as someone who does not, does not know it all. It is true that creative person is where we can articulate your thoughts and position and convert our feeling and emotion into words. This process can help us forge the tools not only to survive, but to thrive in our life. Now, the big question is where to start from? Because <laughs> it's, it's not an easy, it's, it's easy theoretically, but it's not that easy practically. Uh, I have three main ideas to share. The first one is to work on your self-awareness and work on our self-awareness, because I keep doing obviously myself included. The self-awareness is, is shaped by uh, the deliberate personal development, which is essential. We, we need to want to want this, <laughs> you know, which is an essential part for creativity and, and to start the process of development through introspection. Um, and I think true self-awareness, we can, it really is something that can bring us to a higher level of connectivity to ourselves, build our capacity to listen to others and encourage connection grounded on empathy. Because often we're not even empathetic with ourselves. And if we're not empathetic with ourselves, how can we be empathetic with somebody else? So rather than fear, self-awareness required the capacity to recognize and rethink closely our assumption, often informed by unquestioned ideologies or experiences. Our capacity to be self-aware starts with the courage of our weaknesses and embraces our weaknesses, our fears and our shadow. Self-awareness is ultimately an uncomfortable process that forces us to get out of our comfort zone which is why actually we tend to avoid this journey, but I think can really be an incredible rewarding journey. Now, the second idea is to embrace um, uh, uh, once again, this idea of, of Ubuntu uh, and, and, to, and this fundamental belief that the person can only be a person through others. This means that an individual whole existence is relative as connected to the collective. But our connection is also to the ecosystem which all living things hold values and purpose. So the invitation is to somehow be a servant of humanity, um, but not in necessarily in a ecumenic way or not because it's the rule, because this is who we are. <laughs> this is what, who we are as human beings. And I think that if we embrace that, that really inform the priorities in our life and how we regulate the relationship with others, our attitudes, our perspective. I think it can help us overcome the dichotomy that often exists between the I and the others. The third element that I really like is, is a concept that came out from um, a great writer named Bell Hooks. And she was informing us to say, you have to be driven by love and communion. A sense of love that helps us to recenter the word by describing it as a, as a state of grace. Not 
so love in, in the infantile or naive sense, but in the tough and universal sense of a quest and daring and growth. And again, love starts with the internal journey into the self. So love is nurturing the life force within us to embrace our capacity to self-actualize and to enable us to engage in communion with the world around us. So it's not about necessarily community. It's a communion. Because community, it often requires external rules to stay together. While a communion, you want to be there and you need to bring something on the table to create that element, to create that context. So I think in order for us to actually have the, um, you know, to, to, to reach our highest aspiration, we need to be in communion with each other. And again, as I said, not just in community. This means that we need to center love in relation to ourselves and with others. Love is how we change you know, the, the paradigm of oppression, inequality and injustice. And, and finally, I need to make another quote and I need to you know, ask for the great woman that it was Dr. Maya Angelou, when she was talking about courage. Because at the end of the day, none of what we just described is, is possible without courage. And Dr. Maya Angelou said, courage is the most important of all virtues because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without courage. And I think that this is really what I like to share uh, with, with my generation and just to say that we're really all in this together. It was the Little Prince podcast. Draw me the world of tomorrow. Thank you for listening and see you on the next episode.